Guys, we made it. <laughs> How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name's Gianluca. I'm a final year medical student studying in Canada. And the fact that I'm able to make this video today means that I am finally done with step one. Finally. Now I was able to vlog my test day experience and a little bit leading up to the test, but that's what this video is gonna be about. We're gonna talk all about my experience with step one because I have some words. But before we get started, if you guys have written step one in the past, you're a medical student or you're a doctor, and you wanna let people know about what you thought about it, leave it in the comment section below. If you have any questions, leave those as well. Anything that I don't cover in this video, I will answer and, and like the video if, if you wanna see more stuff like this in the future. So first things first, as a Canadian medical student, I am probably in, I think the stat, is about 10%, so I'm in that group, 10% of all Canadian medical students, probably less, that will actually go ahead and write step one this year. So to anyone that wants to know my thoughts on the test just right out the gate, that test was a beast. Step one is everything that people hype it up to be, especially I feel like if you didn't go to an American medical school and more. Personally, at first, I know I had wanted to set aside three or four months to do some studying, but just being in my final year, being in clerkship, needing to do my own medical school exams, applying to residency, working full-time in the hospital, that wasn't possible at all. We didn't have any time as a Canadian medical student to take dedicated study time, which meant that all of my studying, I, I aimed for about three to four hours a day over the course of about two months, uh, two to three months. It consisted mostly of the UWorld practice questions, which I found were amazing, probably the best resources that I, I could find, and also reading through as much of the first aid material as I could, more so as a reference. Okay, so quick update. Today is, uh, well, it's, it's the last week, <laughs> a few days left before the step one exam. It is about 3.10 in the morning right now. And this week I am on emergency psychiatry. So I'm in the uh, emergency department. Uh, I'm going to be in at work tomorrow at, uh, or today. I'm going to be in, in for work at 8 o'clock in the morning. But I'm just going over a little bit more um, final study. Uh, Trying to get everything memorized last second. This is what my room looks like right now. It's the whiteboard over here. Just going over some last minute memorization for some of the different genetic things and different toxin exposures for fetal and, and neonates. Um, pretty tired. Okay, so now I wanna tackle a really important question. Ever since I decided that I was gonna write step one, I had a whole bunch of you guys ask me, a whole bunch of my classmates asked me, my family asked me why I was even writing the test. And th there's three reasons why. The, the first one is because in the future, in my career, I really am planning to get into uh, medical education, medical school curriculum in some sort of academic capacity. And I feel like there are some changes that I want to try and provide some input in for the Canadian medical education system. And I think that one of the best ways that I could educate myself and have a larger voice in that space is to expose myself to the American system, at least in some capacity. And that was a really big part of why I decided to write the test. Reason number two is because I am a very strong proponent of challenging yourself and doing things to push your envelope a little bit more. As a Canadian medical student, it is expected that I'm gonna pass the Canadian licensing board, but I feel like there is a lot of information that they go over in the American system, and similarly that we go over in the Canadian system that doesn't really cross from one to the other. And in one of my earliest medical school experiences, I was in the emergency department working with one of the program directors of an emergency medicine program who was drilling me with all of these questions. And this was very early on in my medical school education. I think at the time he was asking me about different types of brain cancer and the coagulation cascade. I had only been a medical student for um, like a few months at the time. It was very, very early on. And my answer after this, you know, rounds and rounds of questioning was, um, you know, I hadn't learned that yet. We hadn't gotten to that part in the, in the curriculum. We hadn't come across neurology yet. I didn't know what the brain cancer is. And his response at the time stuck with me ever since then. But he goes, um, you need to cut that out now, like right away. You're in medical school and the internet exists. If there's something that you need to know, you need to take that upon yourself to look into it and educate yourself in that area. 
And I know that's a very extreme way of thinking, but I think there's a little bit of truth that comes with that. And it's something that I've challenged myself to do throughout my time in medical school. And the third reason is, although I have no plans of practicing in the States at this current moment, it's not a shot at the American system at all. I'm just very happy with where I am in my career right now. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing to have licenses now um, that you may need at some point in the future. I don't see myself being able to sit down when I'm 45 or 50 years old if the time comes and I need the American and license and sit down and relearn all these enzymes and, and which enzymes need thiamine and things like that. It's very beneficial, I think, to take the step exams when you are still a medical student and not have to do that when you're staff. <laughs> oh man, we're doing this. I feel amped. I feel stoked. I feel like today is definitely not the day to be doubting yourself. It's not the day to to not be feeling good going into this. That was for yesterday. Today, I am going to kill this thing. I, I, you, got, you got to believe it. I, I really think that with, with all these big tests. So, oh man, we're going to go in there right now. Get this eight hour exam out of the way. For uh, some lunch and some water. And it, it, this feels like the MCAT for me. I'm not going to lie. This feels exactly like the MCAT. Um, so we're taking a page out of the MCAT book. And I got a big thermos full of black coffee. And represented McMaster here. And hopefully this makes me through. I don't know. We, we might be cutting it close with about a liter of coffee in here. Hour seven. One more block to go. So, a few things now that I want everyone to know about test day, if you know nothing about the USMLE, it is a pass-fail exam over the course of eight hours. There are seven blocks, and usually every single block has about an hour of time, and it's 40 questions for the most part. There is an additional one hour to complete that eight-hour time period that you get for your break time. So, from the second that you start your test, you have eight hours. You cannot go over that eight hours, but that one hour of break is up to your discretion to use however you want. Personally, what I did was take the first two sections of questions back to back, I did 40 and 40, and then I took that hour break and I distributed, you know, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, depending on how I felt. But after those first two back to back, which is how I practiced, I never ever skipped a break and I tried to eat and stay hydrated and caffeinated throughout the entire day. Now, just like the MCAT, this is an exhausting day. It was really, really tiring. And it's a high security test too. Like everything about this is very, very serious. You get there, you take your fingerprints, both hands, in order to get in, to get out. You need to have your ID on your desk at all times. You walk in, metal detector, and then they come over, they pat you down, they make sure there's nothing on you. They manually go over you with a metal detector. You sit down and there's a camera in your face the entire time to make sure you're not cheating in any way. You get um, some laminated sheets of paper to write on. I took that time in the very beginning, sacrificed the first two, three minutes of my test to write down some formulas for the statistics questions and anything else that I want to go over for test day. Pace yourself. I, I guess I tried to finish every single section with about five to 10 minutes in advance to do reviews. I'm not the type of person that flags questions. Once I move on from one of the questions, it really has to be one that I'm on the fence about to go ahead and flag. Um, that's just the way that I kind of practiced it myself. You guys ready for this? Three, two, one. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Guys, that was so hard. <laughs> that was so hard. That was easily the hardest test and the longest test I've ever written in my entire life. Oh my gosh. That's so that's like a I don't even know where to start. I can't Okay, I'm not going to say much about what was like on the exam and stuff, but First of all, initial reactions. I am so happy to be out of there. I don't I don't even care. Whatever the result, I don't care. 
I said I was going to do it. I studied for this exam that I really didn't need to do, but that I wanted to do. And I wrote it. I sat down for eight hours and I give it my best shot. <laughs> and I'm done. And I'm done. That's it. That's all she wrote. Ah. You know, even though it was eight hours, the, the day just kind of flew by. And out of the you know 240 questions afterwards, I was just kind of like, you didn't test me on on some stuff that i knew <laughs> where where are the 60 questions about the stuff that i spent so long studying but i guess that's uh that's always that's always gonna happen i guess i am absolutely exhausted after after that that's that's my reaction i had to take today off from work from the hospital to write this exam which means that i gotta go in on sunday to make up that shift um which means that my plan for tonight is to freaking sleep I was gonna sleep and do nothing. I just want to do nothing the rest of the day. And I, I can't, I, can, I can't even remember those questions anymore. Like that's, that's done. Whew, guys, we made it. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm done. We're calling it here for now. Maybe Jin Luca from the future has something else to say. But uh, I'm going home. So final thoughts about the step one exam now that that's over and behind me is that is such a stupid exam it's so dumb but i hate myself to say it i would not take that back at all and i would highly recommend that any canadian student i think all canadian students should write that exam the fact that First of all, I think Canadian students are at a disadvantage going into that exam because from my understanding, the American curriculum is shaped in the pre-clerkship years towards doing well on that exam, whereas a lot of the stuff on there was not covered in, in my program at all. I think that the level of microbiology, of immunology, of biochemistry that you see on that test um, and again, these are not necessarily clinically relevant. So that is one argument that a lot of people will tell me as to why they don't recommend the, the step one exam or they, they think that it's a dumb test. But I would say that it is in your best interest as a, as a physician to at least come across that stuff. I think that the challenge proposed by the step one exam has made me a better physician in the long run. I mean, whether I pass, whether I fail, and please God, I really hope that I pass that exam. We find out in about a, a week and a half from today, this is when I'm filming it. Um, I, I would recommend that people write the exam. I think that the way, I, I'm glad that it shifted to pass fail for an exam like this, but it's not pass fail 50% questions right. They do it a little bit weird. Ideally, what I would like to see is that test become 280 questions, you need to get 50% of them right, just so that you have a basic level of, of clinical understanding um, as a Canadian student. That, that's what I think would have been fair from that exam. And I promise you guys that no matter what happens on that exam, no matter what the outcome is, when I find out my score, I will let you all know. I will probably do a video on it. I really wanna do a video on it. Um, and if I pass, I'm, I'm happy to share tips. Um, if I don't, I might still share some tips, but up to you guys if you wanna, if you wanna take that. How am I feeling right now? The, the the exam has a, a terrible way of uh, messing with your with your head walking out of there. Um, initially walking out, um, I knew that I had missed a few, um, but I felt relatively okay. Um, and then as time went on, I, I made the dumb mistake of jumping on a Reddit forum to see uh, how other people thought walking out of the exam, which I, I really shouldn't have. But there was no one to talk to because none of my friends write the exam, so I had no choice but but to go to Reddit and. Uh, yeah, that, that was not a good idea. But anyways, guys, I am I'm happy to share my experiences with you here. Um, I'm super happy that I did it. And I don't think this would have been possible without you guys at home to keep me accountable to the things that I said that I was going to do. That's such a big part about me sharing these things with you. And then that's the deal that we have. If I'm going to do something, I let you know. You guys hold me accountable. I get it done. And we make a video and we talk about it afterwards. Match day for residency is coming up in six five days from now. So I'll have that video come out. If I, if I match, I'll have that video out. I'll have my score reaction come out. Um, if you guys have any questions about anything, let me know in the comment section below and um, best of luck with whatever you got going on. Okay, best of luck with step one. If you're about to go in in a few days, you're gonna do fine. And uh, with that, I'm going to sleep. Everyone take care.